Welcome to part 16 of our RC buggy build and we're building out the top front deck. And for this build we're going to go ahead and use up all the contents in bag I. And basically what we're going to be doing is we'll be screwing in some ball studs in the top deck. And I just want to show you that the reason why this is kind of uh, a tricky build is that th things just overall seem to be uh, screwed in on the top and on the bottom of this particular top deck. Um, you need a few tools, just remember you have your hex allen wrench and then uh, make sure you also have a, a uh, socket wrench as well too and it, it makes your job a little easier. You could hand tighten these to a point but uh, without the right tools it's, it's uh, wrenching is going to be just a little bit more difficult. And for our friends across the pond, I recently learned that we don't they don't refer to these as wrenches, they refer to these as spanners, which is which sounds just so cool. So just uh just so you're aware that uh um I'm just kinda hand tightening these and everything seems to be all set. So we got our front ball studs in there and these these uh link up to our front suspension later on. Next we're going to go ahead and get uh, our, our body mount in here. So just uh, uh, screwing that in, and that just goes right in the center. And the body mount is actually where you put the the Lexan body, and you put in the uh, that little hinge pin over there to lock in the uh, the J Concepts Illusions body in there. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the antenna mount on here and pretty much the antenna mount takes two screws and admittedly it's a kind of a, a smaller screw so uh, just taking this into account and also note that uh, um, it is actually possible I think to mount this in upside down or backwards if you will so if you do that it's not the end of the world but uh, uh, just so you're aware it is possible to put it in upside down and backwards and essentially the whole purpose of this front plate is that it stiffens the chassis so uh, provides it with additional stiffness. Um, just make sure you orient this shock tower mount correctly too because this could actually go in uh, you could put it in the the wrong orientation so uh, the way to remember it is just to put the front shock tower mount uh, on the opposite side of where the ball studs are mounted like as shown here. So we're going to go ahead and get this in. It's kind of a, I still have my uh, Weehaw wrench so I need to save up some some money and replace that at some point. But uh, just so you're aware it's, uh, it's kind of a hard uh, wrenching situation. There we go. Just got that in. Alright, that is looking pretty awesome. Next, we're going to go ahead and screw this into our, our chassis. So there's actually just one screw that goes in, in here. And I'm, this is actually the centermost screw. So I'm placing in the centermost screw first. Then I'm going to go ahead and place the other two in. Because once that is, is uh, set up OK, I could actually just drop those other two in. And I just dropped a screw there. Uh, this is where the magnetic cow RC deck comes in Matt comes in handy there and I just want to make sure I get these screwed in um, I put the center one in there so that uh, things are are uh, are held in place and then I go and and screw in the right one or the left one in and because once everything is in there I could just make sure that everything is now centered and then I'm going to go ahead and screw in everything else in here and here we are so just take a little little time a little extra patience make sure you get this part correct uh, because we're going to be using some thread lock for the next steps so so I'm going to go ahead and just put in like a little bead of thread lock there and just another little bead of thread lock uh, reason why you're using thread lock is because anytime you're screwing something that's uh, aluminum to carbon fiber you need some thread lock to make sure that everything is kind of 
held in place a little bit better. So that is the reason why I'm using Threadlock for, for this step. Uh, after this step, there's only going to be... Uh, I, I really wouldn't need to use the uh, Threadlock anymore after that, that particular step. But uh, just so you're aware, it's, uh, it's just kind of nice to have that thread lock in there. And it's one of those things where it's like you don't have to use it, but it's highly recommended. And the manual also highlights that you do use it. Um, but I have seen racers that haven't used it. Uh, finally, last step is just to go ahead and screw in the shock tower. So your front shock tower has two remaining screws. and this is all we need to do to finish this out. So just take your time. Uh, you don't want to kind of scrape up the front shock tower because this is a nice visual piece that people look at. So once you're done screwing this in, congratulations, you are now done creating the and building the front top deck. And we're just one step closer to racing. And Essentially, things are just coming together. So we're roughly halfway done with, with the uh, chassis build. We just need to finish the rear deck. And that is coming up next in our next video. Thanks for watching.